think is a continuation of other mural works that were completed in the department. I remember when I was a student in the early 70s, I, I witnessed the mural in uh, 118 and in other areas in the lobby. And uh, this is just a tradition that we are carrying on. And I was particularly impressed with this one because the students were very, very excited. They had showed us plans. And my role was just really to facilitate the process, get people uh, together, the co our coordinators, Griselda uh, Corona and Yanina Flores, and even Yanira, our new uh, financial budget assistant, uh, were very, very helpful. So, I mean, we were very excited. We wanted to help the, the project, and we wanted it to be successful. And we really believe strongly in the uh, work of the students, and the students put a tremendous amount of time in it. And I can't believe that they were also putting in time, like from 10 in the evening till 5 in the morning. And uh, the effort, I think, is, is, uh, is well worth it. The work is, uh, again, a continuation of a tradition in this department, and I hope to see uh, further murals. So we're very proud of the students. On the beginning side of the west wall, you'll see this image of the stage woman and she's basically telling the story that goes on here in the mural. So throughout the mural, you'll see the image of the smoke. It's just kind of one of those recurring themes. Um, what it basically signifies is this story being told by the ancestors. And um, you see this image also of Quetzalcoatl on the top, which also, you know, just representing knowledge of, of what's being passed down and transmitted into our world. And then you have also this image of the moon represented by the, by the rabbit. Um, a lot of folks said that in the ancient times that the rabbit represented the moon in the sense that if you were to look at the moon it looks like there's a rabbit so they would say that it represents the grandmothers and also the women energy because it looks like the moon is pregnant with the rabbit. In the next portion of the mural we have um, of course the image of the five professors that passed away and um, this is um, here we're giving homage to Sherlyn Soto, Lorenzo Tapi Flores as well as Karin Duran and Ed Cardona and also um, Roberto Cifuentes and the bottom says in loving memory of our Temachtique um, the Mashtike, which means those who enable us to learn. So it's basically the Nahuatl equivalent of teacher. And on the top, we actually have a poem that was contributed by one of our mechistas, our mechacher from last year, and his name is Jose Juan Gomez. And um, basically, the poem is, references the different parts of the mural, and it looks at the indigenous elements. So I'm also looking at the temple platform, and you know we have the lightning signifying it, so that strikes the platform, representing knowledge being transmitted. And if you look at the detail of the temple, it's not simply a new temple, we were referencing the temple of uh, Quetzalcoatl, uh, specifically because Quetzalcoatl, and it also has Tlaloc, which is um, Tlaloc, which represents water, water representing life, and Quetzalcoatl, which is also associated with knowledge. So the reason why we use these symbols in particular was because they were a reference to knowledge and wisdom, as well as life. So, you know, once again, we're associating our professors and those who passed on with life. And um, you can also see the images in the, in the clouds of the protesters, um, it's uh, basically signifying, you know, like prophecy, you know, like that we're the descendants of our ancestors who fought and of our elders. And we also have this image of Mikisli and Hecat, which you'll see on the Codex Borgia. We modernized it, of course, kind of referencing how although we're not exactly as we were in the past, we're still evolving with, and, you know, we're still using our indigenous symbolisms. That's part of why we did it the way we did, um, kind of adopting the Neo Azteca style. And within this imagery, you'll see that they're wearing these morales, which basically have struggles of today, because we felt we wanted to do a mural that spoke to, to now and wasn't completely nostalgic. Another thing that we also did on this mural in regards with the indigenous symbols was um, we had the image of Oli. It represented in gold, and um, in, the, in the center we have the image of the Day of the Dead Skull, which is, of course, a reference to the Day of the Dead that's celebrated here at CSUN. 
And the reason why we use the Day of the Dead Skull is to symbolize the whole image of life and death, but how we celebrate life and death. What was significant about this also, the way we put it in this way, is to show it, to represent it as beauty. And it's being held up by the Mother Earth, Donancy, and you see that here we have her drawn as a tree, um, with the Guadalquivir symbols also on her. And, um, you know, in the way we had her holding up the skull was, um, you know, was significant because we, we said it's like she's holding up the truth, right, which is the, the guarantee that in life there is death. And that's something that's beautiful and also necessary for life to continue. And also, um, finally, on the on the top of this image, we have the image of the eagle and the condor, which I'm um, referencing, of course, the the union of um, of native peoples of both of both the north and the south, um, and throughout this continent. And you know, and also recognizing that we you know we don't we don't believe in borders, right? As indigenous people. And also going into the image of um, just carrying on into the image, we also have a quote. Um, from Vasconcelos that we felt was relevant to today, which says, at this time, we do not come to work for the university, but ask for the university to work for the people. And we felt that that was something that, although it's something in the past, it's still relevant to today. And so we had this image of the evolution of the stu from a student into a graduate. And so we also have referenced here on, on the center image on the north wall, and the, the central image you'll see is the Beirimian Hall. And the reason why we wanted to include Beirimian Hall is because in reference to the 60s, if it wasn't for the demonstrations and occupations that took place at Beirimian Hall, we would not you know, have the departments we do now, the Ethnic Studies Department. We wouldn't have Chicano, Chicano Studies, Asian American Studies, Pan-African Studies, and all the different various ethnic studies and other departments that we fought for. They would not be here, so that's why we felt we had to reference them here. And finally, this comes on to the images of the March 4th protest, as well as the image of the Oviat Library, and the Oviat Library specifically because that's where, it been, where a lot of student demonstrations have been occurring regarding the budget cuts, which is a very prevalent issue of today. Um, and so we also have the images of, of not simply the demonstration, but also the image of the fee hike roll on the top, showing how the fees have gone up, and just um, basically showing how how you know the struggles don't just go back to the 1960s that but these issues are very relevant and present in our, in our day today and um, of course it gets all on the top you know um, just a reference and showing the beauty of like you know of, of our culture and, and the arts and how they continue today <laughs>